So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Grant. Um, that is now wrong. I'm not a technical consultant anymore. I'm now a system administrator. Um, I got that job yesterday. Um, I am also an amateur radio operator. I worked in radios for about seven years in a professional capacity. Uh, whenever I stopped doing that, I, I then kept up with it with amateur radio. And that's where I've got a lot of the knowledge for lots of the stuff that I break. Um, some contact details there. I have a Twitter account. I don't do a lot on it, but occasionally I put something amusing up. Um, of YouTube, because I'm a millennial, an excuse to try and avoid having a real job. And uh, an email address is probably the most important one there. If you email me on that with any questions, you'll always get an answer. No, see, is that the right way? Cool. So before we get into this, I need to cover um, a quick bit of basics. If you were in my talk earlier on today, you'll be ahead of the game, so feel free to tweet or do your own thing for the next minute or so. But uh, first thing that's important is frequency. Now, Frequency is what we use to essentially measure radio waves. And I'm not going to go into anything too advanced. I always try and keep these talks very high level so that everyone can understand them. And the uh, only few things you need to understand about frequency is that the higher in frequency you go, the more that signal struggles to get through objects. So mobile phones usually work in the UHF, ultra high frequency range. And they can get through objects OK. This is also the same frequency range as your Wi-Fi in your house. Um, with the likes of 4G and 5G coming in, they work at higher frequencies. There's other um, difficulties there. Uh, wavelength is important because of antenna length. Another thing with frequencies, the higher in frequency you go, the shorter the antenna can be. And the reason for this is wavelength. The wavelength is just as it sounds. It is the length of the radio wave. If you could see it in real life, it's how long it is. In the world of amateur radio, we use VHF, very high frequency. And uh, we have a frequency range that we use that we call the two meter band. And we call it that because the wavelength is two meters long. It's as simple as that. And an antenna, in order to be effective, has to be, a, um, has to be divisible into the wavelength. Okay? Ideally, half the wavelength long. So for that two meter band I was talking about, an ideal length for an antenna. Now, people in the radio world will argue this, but an ideal length for an antenna would be half that one meter, OK? So higher in frequency you go, the more it struggles to get through objects, and the shorter antenna you need. Now, bandwidth. This slide, definitely, you'll have seen if you were in my last talk. Uh, bandwidth is particularly important um, whenever it comes to 5G, because it is part of the reason why 5G is so much faster. Um, bandwidth is the area of the frequency that you're using. It's sort of like the width. So if you see, I don't know if this has a pointer, it does, that band in the middle, that is um, the current bandwidth um, that I am receiving. So in this, this is the radio frequency spectrum. That bar is the only bit that I am paying attention to. Okay, that's the only bit that I'm capturing. It's the only bit that, I, um, uh, uh, that my device is in any way aware of. Now, the bandwidth has a bit of a Goldilocks effect. It needs to be just right. Okay, it can't be too big, otherwise it'll capture too much uh, noise and you'll get a bad signal. And if it's too narrow, again, you don't capture enough of the signal to actually work out what it is. And the same goes for transmitting. Whenever you're transmitting, you need to make sure that your bandwidth is adequate for the mode of um, transmission. So sounds complicated, but if you think of AM and FM in your car radio, they both have different uh, bandwidth requirements to be able to transmit. They're two different modes of operation. And 4G and 5G in particular, um, they have higher frequencies that they're allowed to use, and they've been allowed to use um, larger bandwidths. And if you think of that as like a larger pipe, okay, they can send more information with each transmission. And that is part of the reason um, why it is so much faster. So that's the end of the radio basics. You'll be pleased to know, I'm sure. But what actually is 4G and 5G? Well, it doesn't stand for gigahertz, which is a common misconception. It stands for generation. Okay, it's fourth generation mobile telecommunications and fifth generation mobile telecommunications. And they're effectively standards. They're not technologies in themselves. They're just standards that companies have to adhere to in order to uh, market their devices as 4G or 5G compliant. Okay, so the 4G standard, now some of you might be looking at low speeds and wondering, and I'll get to that in a second. But um, this standard, whenever it came out, was a bit optimistic. So whenever it came out, they said that you need 100 megabit per second mobile speed, 
Now that's not mobile as in your mobile phone, that's mobile as in you're moving, you're on a train, you're in a car, whatever. They said that you need to have 100 megabit per second mobile speed and one gigabit per second static speed to market your phone as 4G compliant. Now, I'm sure no one in this room has ever got uh, 100 megabit per second or a gigabit per second on their phone on 4G. I can almost guarantee you probably haven't. And the reason being is that these speeds are theoretical. Now, I said that um, this was optimistic whenever it came out, and it was, and even in theory, um, the companies couldn't fudge the numbers enough to make it uh, look like their devices could do this. But at the time, um, their speeds were so much faster than 3G that there was a, a bit of leniency given, and they said, okay, right, you don't quite meet this criteria, but we'll let you call it 4G. Uh, the frequency ranges that it uses are 800 megahertz, to um, 2,100 megahertz or 2.1 gigahertz, okay? And they're within the UHF band. The important one that I'm sure most of you care about is 5G. And with it, they didn't really care so much about mobile and static speed. They cared about up and download. And in that case, uh, they wanted 20 gigabit per second upload and 10 gigabit per second download. Now, if you've seen any of the 5G tests that have been going about, they're not getting anywhere near this. Okay, again, they're theoretical speeds, um, which are still, in my opinion, a bit optimistic. Frequency ranges, uh, for 5G, it varies very much on where you are um, in the world, but it can go from 400 megahertz through to 24 gigahertz, and in some places, up to 40 gigahertz. Okay, it can be very, very high frequency. Um, in this case, it's called EHF, extremely high frequency. And it utilizes small repeater networks. Now, if you remember earlier, I had mentioned that um, the higher in frequency you go, the more it struggles to get through objects, and the quicker the signal degrades over time. So because of this, they need to have a lot more repeaters. Now, this is used already to an extent with 4G. You'll probably see them about. They look somewhat like the, uh, the picture in the background there, only a bit smaller. And they use them already with 4G. However, with 5G, they're going to be a lot more prevalent because you're nearly going to need one um, for every block of houses near enough. They're low power, all they do is um, rebroadcast the signal, essentially work in a similar way to um, a Wi-Fi repeater in your house. They're, um, they're not fancy bits of kit. Now, there's been a lot of stuff going around about 5G and 5G going to kill you. Now, the reason for this is because of the frequency ranges that it uses. It can go up to 40 gigahertz, which is in the microwave frequency range. And people have looked at that and went, but I've got a microwave in my kitchen that I put on and heat my noodles, and it's shielded so that I don't get injured. It's not the case, okay? Yes, it is the same frequency ranges. However, these signals degrade very quickly over time, as I've said. And because of that, if you look at your microwave, it's shielded. It's not just shielded to protect you. It's also shielded so that it works, okay? It stops those RF signals bouncing about and leaving. Okay, if you took the shielding away and put your noodles in there and put it on for 10 minutes, okay, it will not heat the food, or at least it would heat it very, very, very slowly. And the um, antennas that they use, the, uh, the cell towers, they are operating at about one kilowatt of power, depending on where you are. Okay, your microwave operates anywhere between 700 watts and up to a kilowatt. So it's the same power as your microwave, but if you think about it, this is up quite high, and it usually has a fence around it that says, keep out. Keep out, and you'll be fine, generally, okay? An antenna can hurt you if they are at this power level, but it is not inherent in the frequency itself. It's because it's such high power, okay? If you touch an antenna while it's transmitting at high power, you will get what is called an RF burn. I have had many RF burns in my life, um, quite a few, you would think I would learn, and they suck. Okay, it is like being microwaved. It is a burn underneath your skin. They are not pleasant, but you have to be touching the antenna to actually get burnt, even at a kilowatt of power. So will 5G kill you? Doubt it. Okay. Moving on to the other big scare. Is it going to interfere with weather systems? Okay, people have looked and seen that the frequency ranges that 5G use are close to the frequency ranges that weather detection systems and satellites use. And they've thought, shit, they're very close, that's going to interfere, and we're not gonna know the, what the weather is. Okay, so will it interfere? 
doubt it. Okay? There are regulatory bodies, um, Ofcom in the UK, FCC in America, um, there is a European one which I can't remember the name of, you would have thought I would have researched that before coming over. And their job is to make sure that um, signals don't interfere with each other. That is their job. As you've seen before, um, 5G is a spectrum, okay, it's 400 megahertz up to 40 gigahertz. They have a lot of wiggle room there. If they need to put a cell tower near a um, weather system or a weather detection system and it's operating on the same frequency, they will just change the frequency the tower is using. That's it. That is how simple it is to avoid um, signals colliding with each other. They will do the same thing with a um, satellite base station. If it's on the same frequency, they will move the frequency so that they don't interfere. Okay? It's very easy to do and it is these uh, organizations' jobs. Okay? They are not stupid. They have made some stupid decisions in the past, but generally they're not stupid. Now onto the part that you're probably more concerned about, the actual security aspect of it. Um, now 4G, um, or well, 5G, oh. Oh, my picture's not there. Oh, well, you missed out on the funny picture. Apologies. Um, it was just the kid from um, the Sixth Sense saying, I see cyber risks everywhere. So, uh, so 5G hasn't been out in the wild massively. There are a few people who've had their hands on it. It's been rolled out temporarily in a few cases. Um, so for the most part, the testing has been limited on what 5G is vulnerable to. But for the most part, from what they found, a lot of security risks that are intrinsic in 4G are still there in 5G. So I'm gonna talk about them because they carry across, and I'm gonna talk about two of them. I'm sure you've already seen this slide, but Stingray. Who here has heard of Stingray? One, wow, I was expecting more than that. Yeah. None of you follow the, uh, the uh, America, oh, two, that's okay. I was gonna say it was big whenever people were trying to storm Area 51 because it's what the American government used to stop them using their phones. Um, Stingray is essentially a man in the middle attack. Okay, you set up a device called an SDR, a software defined radio, a very expensive one, mind, that is able to mimic a mobile um, cell tower. And your phone will connect to it. Because if it's the strongest signal, that's what your phone wants, okay? Um, this is hard to mitigate because the phone's working the way that it should and you can buy personalized uh, repeaters, they're called Pico cells, which are essentially mobile phone rebroadcasting um, hotspots that you can use to improve the um, mobile phone signal in your house. Your phone is working exactly the way it should whenever it connects to these devices. So the security aspects come into it because when you're connected to this, there's some information um, that can be harvested from the phone. Now, phone calls and text messages and data are encrypted, but I'll talk about that in a second because there's a way around that but you can capture what is called an IMSI. And I can never remember what the acronym actually stands for, so bear with me. International Mobile Subscriber Identity. I can never remember that for the life of me. And ESN, which is the electronic serial number. It's like the MAC address of the phone. Now, the IMSI contains some details about the phone. Um, you can, from it, you can glean what the person's number is, you can glean um, what service provider they're with, and various other information about the phone. With that, there are several other attacks you can do once you have an IMSI. Um, it's sort of like an IP address, if you will. It's a, it's a rough analogy, but it, it works for the most part. One thing you can do very, very easily with this is uh, what is called DFing, direction finding. Essentially, you can find out where that person is with very, very good accuracy. Because what you do is you get a signal report from that phone to your base station, and you also ask it, what other cell towers have you talked to, and what was your signal report? and you gather those signal reports from all those different um, base stations, and you can triangulate the single signal, and you can point out within a meter of where they're standing. It's very scary, I've seen it done. Now, I'd said there that um, text messages and phone calls and data were encrypted. However, what you can do as a base station is you can pretend to be a very stupid base station. Whenever the phone makes an authentication request to you to say, okay, I want to connect to you, you're the, you're the best uh, signal, your base station can reply saying, yes, that is not a problem, you can connect to me. However, I don't understand these new security protocols that you're using. Downgrade to these ones. And the phone will reply, okay. Okay, these security protocols have been broken many, many years ago. They're very easily crackable, and text messages, phone calls, and even some parts of the data 
can be harvested and decrypted. Okay, now that is the one thing that I think um, should easily be fixable with 5G. As far as I'm aware, at least to the day, it has not been, but I would like to think that that is something they can fix. Um, the reason they do this is because of old phones and old cell towers. Okay, they don't want to cut anyone off from communicating if they have an old device. And I'd said that they'd use this in Nevada. Um, essentially, they strapped something like this to a drone. This is not unique to American militaries. A lot of militaries do this. And what they can do is they can actually set up a whitelist of devices that they want to connect, and everything else is um, blacklisted and won't get through. So all the phones will connect to this um, Stingray device, and um, it will essentially be blocked. It'll just say, no, there's no service. I can't get you through. Their devices will no longer work. Now, if you were in my talk earlier on today, um, you'll know that jamming devices are flat out illegal. This is a jamming device. However, it is not flat out illegal because it's not indiscriminate, it's targeted. Okay, you're specifying within region which devices you want to, uh, you want to attack. So that's Stingray, that's the fun one. Torpedo, anyone heard of Torpedo? Yeah, one, I apologize for what you're about to hear because I do try and keep these high level. I am sure you probably know more about this than me or could explain it better. However, um, Torpedo, at least with uh, uh, 5G at the minute, it is used primarily for information gathering. It's lifting the data out of the air, so you're not actually standing in the middle, you're not a man in the middle as such, you're sort of on the sidelines capturing the signals. And there are a few things that you can do with this. Whenever the phone makes a request, it gets a, what's called a paging file, or it can transmit a paging file. Now that paging file has some useful information, but um, I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a second. But once you get that, you can DOS the phone. You can deny the service of the phone by spamming it with blank paging messages once you know the channel. But more importantly, what is transmitted is what is called a Timsy, which is exactly like an Inzy, but it's temporary. Okay, it changes each time um, it's sent. However, the issue being, it does not change enough. Okay, some companies have started changing this more, um, but not a lot of them. And generally, if you spam fake calls to the phone and essentially get a lot of Timsies coming out. At the minute, if you have 10 Timsies, you have enough to brute force what the IMSI is within about an hour, okay? Um, like I said, a lot of uh, companies have now done this where they drastically change the Timsy and um, uh, rehash it very drastically each time it's sent out and this makes this a lot more difficult um, because the Timsy at its core is just an obfuscated IMSI. Now, a fun thing you can do with paging files is you can inject uh, emergency messages. So if you've ever seen, um, whenever you're on your phone, you get a message from the police that says, oh, watch out for X car in this area, or, or something like that, you can actually inject them using Torpedo into the phone. Now, um, I had a very interesting discussion with my wife about what use is that, so what you can tell them to keep an eye out for a car, and uh, the more we thought about it, if you have a house that say you're wanting to rob, or a street for that matter, you set up one of these devices and you spam all of those um, phones in that area with an emergency message saying, get out, you need to evacuate the area. Okay, most people are probably gonna leave, or at least think about it, and all you need is one house to get out and you have access to that building, okay? It's an easy way of uh, essentially social engineering that person to do something that you want. Okay, so the um, last thing that you can do with this, which I don't know why it, it works like this, if anyone does know, please enlighten me afterwards, but if you have push notifications enabled on your Twitter, on your phone, in the paging file is your Twitter handle, okay? The person can capture your Twitter handle from that paging file. I have no idea why it's in the paging file, I just know it's there. No idea why they've done this or, or what the purpose behind it was, but um, I just thought that was something interesting. Then lead to a bit of social engineering if you're that way inclined. Now, you'd be pleased to know that's it. Any questions? There should be questions. <laughs> Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Who, who's got a question? Even though it can be a technical one. Okay, here's a. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, just, just disable push notifications yeah, no, and okay. it will stop. So we just oh. need to repeat the question. Oh, right, so sorry. So he, um, he was asking, um, how do you stop the Twitter handle from being pushed out through the paging file? Uh, just Twitter, as far as I'm aware, it's just Twitter. Um, I haven't tried to break it myself yet. Um, I'm going to try and see after. I only found out about this um, two days ago. So I did. So I'm going to try and break it and see whether Facebook or any of the other ones. Because, yeah, I have no idea why it's in there. But yes, if you disable push notifications, it, um, it stops it. OK. Any other ones? Good. I got some. Oh, uh, okay. I thought I was getting off light there. No. <laughs> uh, they can be funny. Uh, OK. Even okay. though we, we, we should not return to the aluminum, uh, aluminum uh, caps on the Oh, yeah. No, well, I mean, as soon as I put that on, the recording equipment would stop working. You know, OK. Stop now, signal. the question is, uh, do you set airplane mode on your phone when you pass by unfriendly embassies? <laughs> Any other places? I don't, but that's because um, I'm... People call it paranoid. I say it's not paranoid if there are people out to get you. Um, generally, on my phone, I don't have anything that is identifiable apart from my number, really. So if someone managed to lift my traffic, they, they wouldn't get anything that they wouldn't be able to get from a Google search. Like, if you've seen the talk earlier, it's probably everything. Um, so, no, not really. Um, and actually, on airplane mode, um, there was a few tests done to see how much connectivity was actually disabled with airplane mode. And GPS, and I can't remember the other one, but there was definitely two uh, modes of communication that were still active and were still communicating fine. So, um, if you turn airplane mode on to try and stop people tracking you, it doesn't work. It's still transmitted through GPS. Okay, that's a nice insight. We didn't know that. Yeah. We didn't know that. Okay. Uh, we love conspiracy theories. <laughs> and do you have any conspiracy theories on who spreads info that 5G is bad? We don't buy its just stupidity. <laughs> Sorry, run that by so, me one more time. <laughs> uh, somebody doesn't simply buy, it's just because of stupidity. So mm -hmm. there must be some conspiracy theories on oh, why uh, 5G intentionally is, oh, spread yeah, yeah. 5G uh, like uh, um, that is bad. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think, I think the majority of it is possibly lack of education just because people have seen the, oh, it's in the microwave frequency range. Microwaves are bad. Yeah, it yeah. must be bad. I mean... Um, the same thing came out whenever 4G was around, not to the same extent, but I think every time there's a new technology, especially when it's wireless, people get nervous about it. Yeah, but, but, but imagine, you, you come from Northern Ireland, Ireland yep. right? Yep. Okay. So, so we have our funny Latvian accent, and you have your funny Irish accent, and imagine people just sitting there and, and trying to understand what exactly are you saying. Like, it, like, it is difficult. Like, I'll like when I spoke to Bristolians after the yeah. fifth point, yeah. uh, I can hardly understand a single <laughs> word. But, but the thing is that what they hear is, you can get severe inside burns. <laughs> da, 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 da. And people yes. tweet about that. Yes, that, ah. is, that is fair. That is fair. Although, so, I, uh, to be fair, I mean, so, but, but it's such a close proximity. Yeah. Did I understand it, you, you, correctly you, you, that you, you, you basically you, have yeah. to touch it? Yeah, the, the power drops off so quickly that you have to touch it. Um, I did have one, I, I did manage to get an RF burn. Um, I was testing a bit of equipment and we were doing what called a stress test. And essentially, we put about 10 kilowatts of power through it. Yeah. which is quite extreme. That's quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. and um, whenever I, I turned the thing on, I heard a thud, and I thought, shit, someone's standing near that whenever I turned that on, and I went out, and it was a bird that had landed on the antenna, uh -huh. and as soon as I turned it on, and it just fried it and killed it dead. Oh, so okay. it's, now, to be fair, that was HF, so okay. that was quite low frequency compared to what you've, you've been seeing, so that wasn't even microwave, it was just ridiculous amounts of electricity, yeah, and that, yeah. that, that's all it's it is. 10 kilowatts. So yeah. it's 10 kilowatts. It's not the 5G that killed the bird, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 